This episode is brought to you by Hasa. Liquid is clearly better. Liquid chlorine is the highest purity, works immediately, has no added cyanuric acid or calcium, and it will leave your pool safe, clean, and clear. And by the bottom feeder professional grade battery powered vacuum system, it sucks to clean pools, so cleaning pools sucks less. Get $100 off with code DVB100. This episode is brought to you by Skimmer, the number one pool service software in North America. With Skimmer, you can streamline your schedule, grow your revenue, and keep your customers coming back with five-star service. Whether you're a one-person operation or an established team, Skimmer is your partner in success. Visit GetSkimmer.com slash PoolGuy to try Skimmer for free for 30 days. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. Hey, welcome to the Pool Guy Podcast Show. In this episode, I'm going to talk about 3-inch trichlor tablets, chlorine pucks, tablets, tabs. These are all ways of referring to it. And I'll go over the use of tablets, the overuse, the good, the bad, and the ugly, basically, of the 3-inch chlorine tablets. Are you a pool service pro looking to take your business to the next level? Join the Pool Guy Coaching Program. Get expert advice, business tips, exclusive content, and get direct support from me. I'm a 35-year veteran in the industry. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, I've got the tools to help you succeed. Learn more at swimmingpoollearning.com. So what are the 3-inch chlorine tablets? Well, they're trichlorocyanuric acid. There's a chemical formula of C2Cl3N3O3. Now, if you're a chemistry nerd, that's perfectly fine for you. For all of us that are kind of normal, we just call them trichlor tablets. And that's basically how they're known in the industry. Three-inch trichlor tablets or three-inch chlorine pucks is another thing that I've heard. Just tabs. You know, most pool guys call them three-inch tabs or three-inch tablets. And we leave the trichlor out because we already know what we're talking or referring to when we say three-inch tablets. They're usually about 90% available chlorine. Some of them have a little bit less available chlorine and they have maybe some other fillers. Some have copper in them. I'm thinking of the Clorox Blue tablets that have a little bit of copper in them. So how does this 90% available chlorine translate? Well, if you're comparing it, let's just compare it to CalHypo. We're pretty familiar with CalHypo in the industry. And you can compare this with CalHypo basically like this. So it has 90% available chlorine. CalHypo usually is about 65 75% available chlorine and usually one tablet is about seven ounces roughly and the chlorine delivered per unit is 6.3 ounces. For CalHypo that's about 10 ounces of CalHypo delivers that same amount of chlorine. So again if you have a tablet about 6.3 ounces it's going to deliver the same amount of what 10 ounces of CalHypo delivers. So it's not like you know, extremely stronger than CalHypo, but it is stronger than CalHypo because it is a stronger form of chlorine, but it's not like double the strength or, or or triple the strength of chlorine. So let's compare it to liquid chlorine. So liquid chlorine is about 12.5% and one gallon of it, of course, is typically what we buy here in California. Florida, you buy the two gallons of it. So 16 ounces, a little over 16 ounces of chlorine is about the same as the one trichlor tablet, the 6.3 ounces of chlorine being delivered to the pool. Again, it's strong, but it's not much stronger than CalHypo and liquid chlorine. It just feels like it because it's in that tablet form and you can add more tablets to strengthen it. So if you have a floater and you put four tablets in there, well then of course you're, you're adding more ounces to of the product in the pool. And in order to match that, you have to add more liquid chlorine to kind of match that. Now, it is slow dissolving, so it's not as fast acting as liquid chlorine or CalHypo or even Dichlor. So if you have a pool that you need to raise the chlorine from zero to like five parts per million, you just can't put the tablets in a floater and call it a day and think that's going to work. So if you do have zero chlorine in the pool... Tablets are not designed, the trichlor tablet is not designed to raise the chlorine in the pool. 
rapidly. Think more like the tricolor tablets or a crock pot. If you were to cook a chicken on the grill or on your on your stove in a frying pan, you could probably cook that chicken in, you know, 30 minutes or 20 minutes. But in a crock pot, you're, you're going to cook that chicken over an 8 or 10 hour period. And that's kind of how the tablets work. They're very slow dissolving based on a lot of factors. I remember I was contacted by a company in China that was going to make a chlorinator and they wanted some numbers on the tablets. And I told them there are a lot of things that go into the equation of the trichlor tablet and you can't get a concrete number of like if you use one tablet in the chlorinator, how much chlorine is it going to release in the pool because there's the runtime of the pump, there's the water temperature, there's the pool usage, there's the water quality itself to begin with. All these are factors that affect how effective the chlorine is. And therein lies a little bit of the downside of the tablet. And I'll go over that a little bit later too, as well, when you talk about dosing. So basically that's what the trichlor tablet is. They dissolve slowly in the water. They do have a high acidic content. So if you listen to any of my podcasts, I always kind of compare, I always mention the tablets have a pH of like 2.7 or 3.0, which means that when you're adding the tablets or using that as your primary sanitizer, your pool is going to maintain a pretty steady pH. Now, if you have a vinyl liner pool or fiberglass pool, I wouldn't recommend using trichlor tablets in those pool types. Since you have a very low acid demand with the fiberglass and vinyl, the pH tends to drop really low in those pools if you use trichlor tablets. There are generally two ways you can introduce the trichlor tablets to the pool. One is with a floater. The floater typically should be tied. I usually tie it to the skimmer lid. Or if there's a ladder, I'll tie it to the side of the ladder. You don't really want it floating in the pool freely because if you have step a step area in the pool, either a pebble tech pool or a regular plaster pool, and if you've been doing service as long as I have or taken over certain accounts, you'll see like a little circle on the top step area or maybe a half moon shape on the top step area. If you have a pebble tech pool, you'll see a discoloration of the pebble on the first step. Well, that's from the floater kind of just sitting right over that area and the trichlor tablets kind of leaking into the pool in a high concentrated form and the acid burning the surface of the pool. So it's really to your advantage to tie the floater somewhere where it's not going to move freely around the pool so it doesn't get a chance to burn the plaster or the pebble tech of the pool surface by kind of floating right over that spot. Also, if the tablet falls out, and is on the bottom of the pool, within a day or so, it's going to leave a really bad stain on the bottom, almost like a burn or rust mark. And that's because, again, they are about 3 pH as far as the um, acid content because they have cyanuric acid. Now, I haven't touched on this yet, and I will in a minute when I talk about some of the bad aspects of it, but part of the ingredients is cyanuric acid. I'll get to that in a second. But this is kind of how you distribute the tablet, either in a floater or in an in online or offline chlorinator. Typically, it's a rainbow chlorinator that Pentair purchased many years ago. And so rainbow is the name that we all call it still, even though it's owned by Pentair. So the rainbow chlorinators are popular out there. And they're usually offline, which means they have tubes going into the plumbing. Or they're inline, which means they sit on the plumbing. And this is how the tablets get introduced into the pool. One drawback with the offline and inline chlorinators is that the trichlor tablets, when they're wet, are extremely toxic smelling. They're like a mustard gas, basically. And if you've experienced this, which I've unfortunately experienced this in several forms, but if any water ever gets into the bucket of tablets and you cover it and uncover it, that gas is pretty overpowering and it could cause lung damage. In fact, and it it definitely knocks you to the ground and you're coughing up your lungs pretty badly. The same thing can happen with an offline or inline chlorinator if for some reason the tablets are not dissolving properly in those chlorinators they can have a really toxic smell when you take the lid off. So I always whenever I get to a new account and I'm taking the lid off I'll take the lid off I'll I'll kind of loosen it to the point where it's going to come off and then when I pull it off I'll step back a few feet and then I'll let it air out just to make sure because sometimes there is a tablet in there that's partially dissolved and it's extremely toxic. So that's a drawback with the inline and offline coordinators is that they can really be toxic. The floaters, not so much, but you can run into a problem with the floater 
smelling a little bit, but nothing to the extent of one of those chlorinators that are attached to the equipment. I mentioned the pH in the tablet being low, and this is one reason why you don't want to put it directly in the skimmer basket. If there's a pool heater, it's pretty corrosive to some of the heater components, and it could cause damage, and it could cause staining out of the return line. I've taken over accounts before where they have like almost like a rust stain coming out of the return line, and I pretty much know already that it's because they have tablets in the skimmer basket, and it causes that. Because basically when the pool turns off, you have all that high concentration of really acidic water sitting in the skimmer. So when you fire the pool on, all that goes right through the plumbing, into the filter, through the heater, and that's where the damage can happen. Now, I had a question one time from someone who was like, well, what if I don't turn my pool off? What if I run 24 hours a day? That's a pretty good question because then you're not really having that high dose of concentrated water going into the heater or into the filter. But I still think it's a bad idea to have a tablet in the skimmer. It's just not something you would want to do. Floaters are really inexpensive and you can just put one right in the pool and you know that's call it a day at that point. So no need to put it in the skimmer. So the nice thing about the trichlor tablets is that they're readily, readily available. They're slow dissolving. They release a small amount of chlorine as they dissolve into the pool. And they are a good way to maintain a pool because it's really hands off and easy. You put two tablets in the floater and don't have to check on the pool for a week. Usually the free chlorine level is pretty stable. The pH stays pretty stable. And so, you know, if it was just at that point, the product would be golden. But there are some bad aspects and some ugly aspects of trichlor tablets. So let me touch on some of the downside. Now, at the beginning, I purposely didn't state a component of trichlor because hopefully you're listening into this part of the podcast where I talk about the downside or maybe the dark side of the tablets, I guess, if you want to be dramatic. But every chlorine type has a byproduct. So calhypo is calcium. Liquid chlorine is salt. Dichlor has cyanuric acid as well. And trichlor has cyanuric acid. How much cyanuric acid is in the tablet? About half of the tablet is trichlor in most cases. So I'm just going to say 50%. So what this means is that if you use a 50-pound bucket of trichlor in the season in your pool which can be something that you can do because if you have a 20,000 gallon pool, a 50 pound bucket of tablets can be used up pretty rapidly during the summertime in California and Texas areas where you get a lot of sun and heat. That's not unheard of to go through a whole 50 pound bucket of tablets. Well, what that means mathematically is that you're adding 25 pounds of cyanuric acid to the pool during that period. That's a lot of cyanuric acid that you're adding to the pool So you realize that, of course, cyanuric acid doesn't evaporate out of the pool, and it only leaves the pool through splash out and maybe backwashing of the filter. And it can be diluted if you have a lot of rain, but there's not a lot of rain happening here in the summertime. So basically, you're adding these tablets to the pool, and you're raising the cyanuric acid to the pool. And this is a problem because it will slow down the effectiveness of chlorine, And you're going to need more and more free chlorine in the pool to make it effective in a pool with really high cyanuric acid in it. So I would say that, yes, the byproduct of liquid chlorine is salt. You're adding salt to the water. It's probably pretty benign as far as a byproduct. With calhypo, yes, you're adding calcium to the water. And if you're in an area where you have low calcium hardness, not a big deal. Like a lot of parts of Florida using calhypo doesn't really raise the calcium hardness a whole lot in the pool. But if you're adding tablets as your primary sanitizer, yes, you are raising the cyanuric acid level, sometimes to really obscene levels in the pool. I've taken over accounts before where I can't even get an accurate reading of the cyanuric acid. It's so high in the pool. And of course, the easy solution and a good way to control cyanuric acid levels with tablets is a partial drain of the pool. So every month, you should be draining a few inches of water out of the pool and filling it with fresh water, or maybe you're draining a foot of water and filling it with fresh water every month or so, and this will reduce the cyanuric acid level because you're draining some of the water and you're adding fresh water to the pool. Now, how many people do this? Very few, if any, do this kind of partial drain with their pool if they're using tablets. They kind of just keep using them until they build up to a certain level, and then they may do a complete drain of the pool, or 
you may switch over to a non-stabilized chlorine like liquid chlorine or calhypo. When I say non-stabilized, they don't have cyanuric acid. So typically you're not adding more cyanuric acid when you use liquid chlorine and calhypo because there is no cyanuric acid in those products. But the danger is the cyanuric acid level can rise to a point where the chlorine is ineffective in the pool. Back in the day, we used to call that chlorine lock, but doesn't really exist. The chlorine is not locked up in it. It's just that the higher cyanuric acid level makes the chlorine less effective. I remember I was at the supplier one time and a pool guy walked in and was like, man, I have some really chlorine resistant algae. I mean, my, my pools are really good. They're 10 parts a million, but the algae is still there and I just can't get rid of it. And I'm thinking, well, it's really not chlorine resistant algae. The chlorine is just not effective or at a high enough level to actually work in the pool. So Bob Lowry uses this formula of 7.5% of cyanuric acid to free chlorine. And I think it's a great baseline formula to use out there to kind of see how you have to keep the chlorine level to make it effective. So the reason why this pool guy had algae that wasn't being taken care of with the high chlorine level is probably the cyanuric acid level was much higher and 10 parts per million of free chlorine was not working. Here's an example I can give you that's practical. Let's just say your cyanuric acid level is at 200 parts per million. Well, if you times that by 7.5%, you need to keep the chlorine at 15 parts per million to make it effective in the pool with a 200 parts per million cyanuric acid level. Take that with a pool at 70 parts per million of cyanuric acid level, which is still a little bit higher than the 50 parts per million recommended. And all you need is a 5 parts per million chlorine level in that pool based on that 7.5%. So you can see the pool guy being exasperated walking in saying, this is like chlorine resistant algae. My pools are at 10 parts per million and I'm still getting algae in the pool. Well, because the chlorine is not effective with that high cyanuric acid level, it's not fighting and killing the algae because at 10 parts per million, it's still five parts per million short in power to get rid of the, the algae in the pool, if that makes sense. And that's why the downside of cyanuric acid is that it raises the cyanuric acid level to really high to a really high level in the pool, making the chlorine less effective. Now in the second part here, I'm going to get into a little bit about dosing with trichlor and some ways you can get away with using trichlor tablets effectively without raising the cyanuric acid level in the pool to astronomical levels and ways to kind of mitigate the downside of cyanuric acid that is in the trichlor tablets that's being released into the pool. Looking for other podcasts, especially the second part, you can find those on my website at swimmingpoollearning.com on the podcast banner. Click on that. And there'll be a drop-down menu of other podcasts there also for you to listen to. And if you're interested in the coaching program that I offer, you can learn more at poolguycoaching.com. Thanks for listening to this podcast. Have a great week, and God bless. This episode is brought to you by Hasa, providing products that deliver clean, healthy water for every aspect of everyday life. The bottom feeder battery-powered vacuum system, portable, powerful, and only weighs 12 pounds. And Skimmer. Get Skimmer, America's number one pool service software. Podcast listeners can try Skimmer for free at getskimmer.com backslash pool guy.